Right, right. And then a little We're bit live. later. We're live. <clears throat> We're live. We're live. But the purchase was in 85. We are live. <laughs> Just letting Susan get seven. Right. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> No one acknowledged me. They kept talking. Kathy, are we live? Sorry, I didn't give you, I apologize. Uh, good evening uh, and welcome to the June 1st, 2022 Yarmouth Planning Board meeting. I'm Joanne Crowley Chair as this is a hybrid meeting involving both in-person and remote participants. I'll read the following statement into the record. This is to formally advise that as required by Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 30A, paragraphs 18 to 25, and pursuant to the Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, an act relative to extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency signed into law on June 16th, 2021. The Yarmouth Planning Board will hold a public meeting on Wednesday, June 1st, 2022 at 5.30 p.m. In the hearing room, Yarmouth Town Hall, 1146 Route 28, South Yarmouth, Mass, 02664. The public is welcome to attend. Remote access provided on the meeting agenda posted on the town website at www.yarmouth.ma.us. Under the agendas and minutes tab, please select planning board. I'll begin by taking roll call. Brad Goodwin? Present. Liz Hartsgrove? Present. Susan Britta? Present. Will Rubenstein? Chris Vincent? Jim Sabin? Present. Joanne Crowley? Present. Seeing that we have a, a quorum uh, present, I will now call the meeting to order. For those um, uh, in the public for remote participation uh, during the public comment for public hearings and at my discretion during this public meeting, I'll invite the audience to comment. Online audience members can use the raise hand button to notify the chair. Dial in audience members should press star nine on their phones. All audience members will be muted until you are recognized by me to participate. Once recognized audience members are asked to identify themselves by first and last name and affiliation for public record. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First on our agenda this evening is uh, a continuation of our planning board goals discussion. Um, as discussed briefly at our meeting uh, last, uh, last month, we identified some preliminary goals, which I'll, I'll refer to as a work plan, uh, more or less. Um, I'd like to make a, a note that uh, Will Rubenstein has joined us. Good evening, Will. Um, and uh, to what we'd like to focus on for the coming year. Kathy attached to our um, uh, agenda this evening, the minutes from our meeting last week, uh, which outlined some of those uh, items on the work plan. I'd like to start, um, I, I wanna get into that, but I'd like to start and get a sense from the board. As I thought about this today, I, I'd like to make a suggestion that we take this opportunity and that we continue to take this opportunity each year when we set work plans and goals to make as strong a linkage to the vision plan and statement that we can um, by identifying particular goals that are contained in the vision that resonate with us, that we participate in help making happen. Um, and I, I took the liberty of going through the vision plan uh, today. I'll just use as a couple of examples and I'd like to offer that I would work with Kathy to try to uh, identify, to write this up as, as how we might want to um, linkage this, if this is something we wanna do. But as an example, um, under the environment, um, uh, we have a, 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 a promote uh, development placement, develop placement that protects water resources, open spaces, and encourages redevelopment over new development. We have a road pro a project ahead of us um, in the coming weeks that we're gonna be reviewing. Under community character and design, we have um, goals to promote residential and commercial growth management that focuses on redevelopment that doesn't overbuild or overcrowd um, the community. We also have a goal to provide modified zoning and improved design standards and aesthetics along commercial corridors. 
Um, and then uh, finally, we have um, a specific one under the economy. Again, the redevelopment of commercial corridors to grow our economy, improve the aesthetics of commercial co uh, corridors and project open space. I think we should, in, 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 in language and in spirit, try to incorporate some of that into, um, into our uh, plans for the coming year and how our work plan fits into those. Um, any reactions? From, from from the board or from you, Kathy, as to linking back to the vision plan? The board. Uh, Brad, any, any thoughts on that? Not necessary, uh, okay. Nope, nothing, I, I think it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lofty goal and meaning that it's, it's, it's very commendable. I was thinking more basic. Things like, you know, I know we have to sit down with the fire chief and the police chief and look how we did this summer with the, the new laws we just put in. I have a feeling the chamber is going to come back and want us to talk about employee housing on a more formal, structured basis going forward instead of just April through October. So I was doing more of the mundane stuff. So, but I was, that's a really good idea to look higher up. So, congratulations. Just as something that's up there that would probably be standard, I'm thinking. Every year we do a plan. We would have these vision goals that are good for a few years, I hope. Um, yeah. And that's just something to keep in mind that these things support those goals. Not that we do anything specific, but that our work plan is consistent and resonates with these particular goals. I think you will find if we work on the local comprehensive plan, that will naturally come out of that process where you guys will be given very specific goals uh, or actual implementation items to meet the various goals that were outlined in the vision plan. Um, I think in the near future, I was thinking a little bit more like, like Brad of kind of where do we need to go? Because we really need to emphasize the local comprehensive plan. I haven't had time to get to the RFP and that's concerning to me because we have great momentum and I don't want to lose it. There's just so many different projects that are being thrown at staff right now. Um, it, it just makes it a little bit more difficult. So trying to right now correlate it to the vision plan is I think pre, maybe premature, um, certainly something that will naturally come out of the local comprehensive plan process. Okay, any, any, other, any other comments on that? So let's go right to the, um, the identification of some of our work plan that Kathy uh, mentioned in the minutes. Um, Uh, they included developing the groundwork for the local comprehensive plan, uh, updating the housing production plan, participating in the open space and recreation update, and convening the fall summit on the 22 zoning, zoning amendments. Are there others uh, that we'd like to uh, discuss? Um, any comments on, on others that... Um, Madam Chair. If, yes. Um, so uh, I'm the new guy, as everybody knows. Um, so I appreciate that the board has looked at some goals and, and had some discussions. Um, I'm curious to know how the the planning board's goals um, relate to the board of selectmen's goals, and are we uh, paddling in the same stream or in different directions? Um, I don't have the selectmen's goals, so I don't really know if they have any or if, or if they do, do we um, match those in any way? Uh, my understanding is they had scheduled two to three summits to talk about their goals and they were all canceled, I think mostly due to weather um, situations. So I don't believe they've had any goals in the last two years, FY21 maybe. Okay. So they're still working on, and I'd like to think that that's probably something that they would, now that they have um, a new board, they typically start to look at their goals. I think that's an important part of the puzzle. I mean, they are the policy makers of the community. And, and if we're trying to put policy together that doesn't necessarily agree what they're trying to achieve, then what are we doing? Um, but maybe competing with each other or doing things that need to be done at a different rate and schedule. Um, so I, I, I think that's, that's an important thing that we need to, it, it, even when we put our policies and, and goals together now, uh, we need to recognize that we might need to be a little bit flexible should they get to the point of actually having a vision for what they want to see the community be. Um, 
because actually that's part of what we're trying to do is help create that vision. Um, and uh, it, it's key to hear from the top of the head to, so the rest of the body can move in the same direction. Um, that being said, you know, I, I, I looked at the, the list and it, and it is quite um, extensive. And I know um, Kathy and her department are up to their eyeballs and trying to get stuff done. And I keep certainly uh, helping that pile get bigger on a regular basis. Um, so I, I know that, that this is a lot to undertake over the course of a year. Um, but I look at item B and is updating the housing production plan. And it, and it rings to me again that um, if there's anything critical in this community, um, whether it be the, the seasonal housing for seasonal employees, uh, although I agree that is a critical, I would consider that critical A1. And I think critical A is housing as a whole for year round residents. And, um, you know, last week I had, uh, last time I had mentioned the accessory apartment unit bylaw and was told we have one. So I looked it up and if it's our, if it's 407, then it is the intent of the bylaw to provide a variety of housing types to meet the challenging needs of the community. But when I read the bylaw, it restricts accessory units to families and affordability. And if we're gonna be serious about addressing the housing in this community, we need to address those two restrictions. And in my opinion, um, maybe even eliminate them altogether to create um, more of a desire to create them. Um, otherwise, people are not intended to, to, to build accessory units because there's no incentive. So if we can t look at those incentives and, and have a discussion about whether we keep them or not, how we ch keep them, um, I think that's critical to what this board is here for. And I know it causes more work for the department, but I think it's one of those things that we really need to take a strong look at is what we're doing with housing in this community. Um, so as far as the goals in, in, of the, the board, I would like to, to ask that um, the issue of housing and how we address uh, accessory uh, dwelling units um, be a subject of conversation uh, in, in our future uh, so that we can try to start um, addressing this critical need of our community. Thank you. Uh, let's go to our remote members. Liz. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, I agree, um, Jim, with you that the goals of the planning board need to be aligned and complementing of the Board of Selectmen. And even though they have not renewed or updated their goals, in over two fiscal years, you can actually look back at the three that are posted online and there isn't much change to it. It's pretty much still the same topics. Um, so it gives us kind of a sense and it is aligned with the vision uh, plan that we put together. So um, it's kind of the same general vicinity. So we're not too far off. Um, but I agree that there are some things that we could tackle as a board um, for the community and being proactive with it. And I recommend that um, it's really good to have goals, but only if they're achievable. So um, I do recommend that we have maybe some short-term and then long-term goals. So it keeps us, um, like baby steps and identifying the baby steps to get to, um, yeah, to get to it. So thank you. Thanks, Liz. Will? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, yeah, I, I guess I third what Liz was saying as a second. Um, and I do agree that in order to feel like we can come back here a year from now and say that we, you know, and reset our goals. It would be really good to be able to know that we've actually accomplished them or at least feel like we've made progress on them. So I agree with Liz that having, having the, the goals be, <clears throat> I don't know, calibrated. <laughs> I don't even know what the word is. Um, 
makes a lot of sense. I also agree with Mr. Sabin, and it's not just the creation of accessory dwelling units, it's also the reclassification of accessory dwelling units and, and figuring out a way to have a lot of existing parcels that have the potential to be offer ADUs is also important. So I do agree there's a big discussion to be had about ADUs, not to mention the restrictions in terms of what they should be created for, but maybe instead of, maybe I took it too literally what Mr. Shaven was saying, but I think there's in addition, it's also the in-law apartments and cottages and pieces that already exist in our town that can also be classified as such. Um, and I do understand that having the LCP, just to tie back into the very first thing that you mentioned, Madam Chair, I think that having the LCP a little further down the road would also be wise before we, you know, realign completely um, our entire package. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, for both of you, uh, just a, a, I just want to get a sense of the, the, the four uh, items that we preliminarily identified as the work plan. Uh, I want to get a sense that those seem appropriate from your perspectives. Um, we talked about these uh, at a couple of other meetings. Uh, so I'm just trying to get a sense that as a baseline, um, we have something we're, we're, we're all in agreement on. Okay, great. Uh, Susan, Frida? Uh, I like, I, it's such a huge topic. I like the idea, Liz's idea of breaking it up into short-term and long-term goals. Because often if you can achieve your long-term goals, I think that's more what Brad was getting at. If we can if we can tackle the seasonal thing, that rolls into a larger conversation about housing in general, and that might be the longer-term goal. I think it's easier to handle, um, it's easier to understand, and we, and we certainly can achieve, I think, some of the, long, the short-term goals. We might not get to our long-term goals, but we can take steps toward achieving them by getting our short-term goals in line. Um, I think it is going to be a lively discussion on, on housing. Um, as many of you know, I'm extremely skeptical on accessory dwelling units. So we will have a very lively discussion on accessory dwelling units um, and how they fit into the broader real estate. I really <laughs> happy you at the housing summit, I think, when we talked about this. So that will be a, a good, uh, you know, good lively discussion, I think very beneficial for the town. Um, uh, the, the seasonal housing, you know, we're, we're obsessed with housing. Uh, there are other things going on in the town that I think, you know, we also need to be focusing on. Um, uh, I'm very focused on the development opportunities along Route 28 and the business opportunities and how that and how housing maybe feeds into that business opportunity. Uh, it's a very cobweb discussion, and um, I think the planning board is the place to sort of pull all those threads together to create a, a broader picture of economic development and how housing fits into that, um, what we're doing on 28 that fits into economic development. So it will be a busy year, but I, I don't think we ought to get too ambitious. I think we ought to pick a few things, short term, few long term, and, and try to achieve them. I don't think we need to solve, uh, we don't need to be Robert Moses you know, in, uh, in, in the next six months. But uh, I do think we can do, make significant progress on the seasonal housing issue. I think we've taken good steps already. Um, it may need some refinement. We'll get some data at the end of the summer and see what needs to be done. And then take that piece and fold it into a bigger piece. And that might lead to a discussion by then about what's happening on Route 28 and how all of that fits into Route 28. So it's gonna be a busy year and it's a very, it's a very, um, it's a conversation that does not lead itself to reductionist thinking. You know, if we only do this, then this is going to happen. It's a very, very nuanced network of, of thoughts, and uh, they all have to complement each other. So I think it will be a busy year. And I said, if we can have a few short-term goals and a few long-term goals and achieve even our short-term goals, I think we can ring the bell of success. Brad, Mr. Goodwin? No, I, I agree. I just... Um, I've had a few meetings with some people at town hall who said that uh, this lady to my right is really under a lot of pressure uh, with a lot of stuff on her plate. So I think if we take small bites of the apple and concentrate on maybe um, the ZBA article we had today, the comment about the commercial um, mm. solar panels, and we just button up a few loose engines on this and that, I bet if we just go 
three for zero between now and next October, October of 2023. I think that'll be good for everybody because um, I love overworking 10 employees. But uh, when two employees who don't know me that well said, you know, by the way, I'm like, oh, so. Is there anything we can do to I'm sorry. free up funds for I apologize. a part-time summer intern or something for Kathy, for the, for the planning office? How long have you been trying, Kathy? I think a lot of the stuff that I do is of a very technical nature. There's not a lot of, I mean, sometimes the, the thing I'd love to jettison is things like minutes, mm -hmm. you know, and that, that the town administrator's office has tried and they've hired someone part-time and they're kind of catching up with the board of selectmen minutes and they're trying to expand that program. So maybe um, it could fall into, into those types of things. But um, a lot of it, like the definitive subdivision, that's a technical nature, providing you with technical information and guidance with regard to the road, um, with, with zoning amendments. So there's the cell tower, um, you know, the design review committee, the DISUC committee that, I mean, the, we gave a great presentation to the Board of Selectmen. It was very well received, but that's an enormous amount of my time um, with design and permitting related to, to that. So, and it's of a technical nature. I don't know unless you have someone kind of equivalent to me, I don't know who, who you're giving it off mm -hmm. to. Um, and there's, there's just, it's not just the fact that um, people are overworked. There's also vacant positions that we can't fill. We have a civil engineering position since last fall that's let, been unfilled. It's a good job, but you know, they can make more money working for a private uh, engineering firm than working necessarily for the town. So it's difficult. So we're and they can't afford housing. in general by lack of positions and lack of it and then having the vacancies. Um, I think the first four items that we have there, the local comprehensive plan, that's short and long term. I mean, let's right. make some progress on that. Let's concentrate on that. Updating the housing production plan, that's going to help and lead into our local comprehensive plan. You guys need to review it. You need to approve it and recommend it. Um, the open space and recreation plan, again, leads into the local comprehensive plan. That's something that we need so that we can maintain all of these great grants that we have. The park grant that went for uh, Yankee Village, the, the land water conservation grant that we have, but the Riverwalk Park. Let's not risk losing those things and being sure that we can always maintain our eligibility for those things. Um, the fall summit, we made some promises. We need to continue with that and, and look at what happened over the summer and whether there's some tweaks that need to happen uh, next annual town meeting in order to address that. But any larger term items like an ADU or a major solar, um, that's not something that's going to happen in the next year. It's just not. There's a lot of effort that's going to go in the local comprehensive plan. There's a lot of effort that's going to go in the Riverwalk Park. Uh, and I think those are long, long term goals of the town of Yarmouth, the Board of Selectmen, the Planning Board, the DISAC that need to have their time and attention right now. As a priority. As a time That's for a everything. Priority. And right yeah. now, I think it's, it's the co comprehensive plan and the Riverwalk Park. Yeah. And, and uh, with regard to the housing production plan, you've said this before, I mean, that is part of our regulatory duties to approve that. So that's coming up for us to uh, uh, look at. Um, and we've made the promise about getting back to the business community and others with regard to, hey, how'd we, how did that amend, how did those zoning amendments work? How'd we do? Um, and typically, I mean, I, I think that the special town meeting idea has been set up, I think, um, my, my sense of it is that that would be a primary focus if there are zoning amendments. We get them off the agenda of the of the annual town meeting, and that we can focus better on them in the fall. So, if there were something to come up, and we had to handle quickly, it's not going to be an annual town meeting um, amendment. We just can't do it. We don't have the horses. We don't have the time. We know how long it how long it takes with public hearings and write ups. Our discussions alone um, consume meeting after meeting after meeting. Um, but initial, initiating those discussions about what um, amendments that are coming to us, like solar, when, so, when it comes to us from the Zoning Board of Appeals, we can't not address it. We can't not think about it. Um, it's important for us to, to do some due diligence on, gee, what, what's happening around us? Are other towns doing stuff? How do we do it now? Um, and, and, and get our feet a little bit wet, but um, trying to presume that we might have amendments in place, ready to go, that have been thoughtfully prepared by us and reviewed by the public for the annual town meeting is just not going to happen. So, not with all this other stuff. Not with there. all this other stuff. No, exactly. 
Um, so I think focusing on on these four um, will be will be critical and 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 quite challenging, quite challenging, um, um, especially just the time you have to spend, Kathy, to to secure and start working with the consultant for the LCP. I need to get a consultant for the open space and recreation plan and also the hazard mitigation plan, which needs to be updated. So there's a lot of balls in the air right now on a lot of different things, uh, which again, will all feed right nicely into our local comprehensive plan. Okay. Maybe things are aligning correctly. Kathy, do we have a target date for completion of the LCP? Um, not right oh. now. No, I need to work up the RFP. I need to solicit. I need to start looking at a schedule. Uh, I think we did a great job with the vision plan having a schedule and sticking to it. Um, my concern right now, in all honesty, is the Riverwalk Park and making sure that that doesn't slip anymore on the schedule and that we can continue with, with that. Um, but I think having that hard schedule is helpful to everybody. It's certainly helpful to me to keep things um, moving along. So I do need to develop all of those things. Is that the engineer in you speaking? What's that schedule? I said, is that the engineer in you speaking? Well, well the problem is, is if you don't have a hard schedule, things that don't have a regulatory deadline kind of slip, yep. you know, and that's kind of what ha has been happening. Um, to-do list. So, yeah, so you got to keep it to the front of the to-do list um, and the schedule sometimes helps you do that. Well, I, I will do my best to support you with that, Kathy. Um, and uh, you need to let us know uh, as forcefully as you need to um, uh, when we're, we're pushing um, in the wrong places. Thank you, appreciate it. Because we can't do this without you. Thank you. We can't do this, <laughs> we can't go anywhere without you. Okay, uh, any further discussion with regard to this? Um, thank you. Um, we do not have meeting minutes uh, because you're spending <laughs> that meeting alone. <laughs> you, we should see meeting minutes in October for that one. Uh, I don't know how I quickly you can get those I'm done. done. <laughs> oh my God. Um, and then you'll have even more when we get to June 15th. Um, can I ask Kathy, do you uh, go back and listen to the recording and then Put the minutes together or what's the process for a typical meeting no um i just use just my little minute. notes and if i do it in a timely fashion after the meeting it's not too bad <laughs> <laughs> um but for something like a public hearing where i think it's important to be sure that you're getting everyone's comments accurately and in thorough enough to get the emphasis of it yep. sometimes i will watch it yeah i was just wondering if the town could get somebody to just you know exactly the whole job just listen to the minutes of all these boards and committees and just them up. we have someone it's hired part-time i think it's 19 hours a week uh, for board selectmen they're concentrating on getting up just the up. board well they're they're behind so they're oh. concentrating getting up uh and once that happens and maybe expanding the program hiring more people yeah. uh and that type of thing i think bob rittenauer is very um understanding that it doesn't make sense to have higher level staff spending time doing making notes meetings. no it's, uh, mm -mm. so no. and it's time consuming it's, it is, it, it really is, especially only really, really for the public hearings. In general, for our regular meetings, it's not, it's not too, too bad. But yeah, you're right, it is time consuming. Uh, Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, my only comment there, Kathy, is the note we got today. Um, yeah, we Jay did Frabby. receive, and I think I sent it out to everybody, um, one of the members of the um, Zoning Board of Appeals, Jay Frappery. Um, the, the Cape Cod Commission, uh, Cape Cod Commission, Cape Cod Hospital had come before them with a, putting solar canopies over their large parking area off of Bayview, um, and there was some concerns from the ZBA that there really there's no there's no regulations that specifically say anything in our zoning bylaw. Obviously, there's certain protections that are offered um, solar in Chapter 40A and not unreasonably regulating it, but we don't have much in our bylaw. Uh, Mark Grills, the building commissioner, views them as structures. Uh, so there's some regulation it gets regulated um, that way um, but they really felt because there was the board themselves were not in agreement on how to handle them that they would appreciate having some guidance i think in the zoning bylaw um, with regard to the, these so they're looking to uh, to us to they, they are looking to yeah, sorry, to uh, okay. to the planning board yep okay. to, to see if there's something so and this might be something this. later in the fall we can start that process and start looking as joanne uh, mentioned, you know, what are other communities doing, having some conversations with town council about, you know, how far could we go or what, what do we need to stay away from, um, seeing if there's model bylaws out there and that 
and that type of thing. Um, but it's, it, ZBA doesn't ask all that much of us usually. So um, I think they're looking for some clarity here and it would be something that we could probably start, start looking at maybe in the fall. Would we want input from historic too as to how mm -hmm. they view those? Because I know some places they, historic, they allow it, some places they don't. So mm -hmm. maybe some input from them. They're gonna have their regulations and we're gonna have ours. So we may allow it and they may not allow it. And I don't know whether there's much we can do to change their particular mind about it. No, but we may, might be able to structure ours to be more in conformance with theirs. It would be more restrictive. Is that, Maybe. yeah. Mo yeah, I mean, mostly what they're, uh, um, I think they're looking at are roof mounted. Yeah. Basically, we don't really get involved with roof mounted. It goes just goes to the building department, they get a building permit and they're able to put their roof mounted solar on. It's not something that's regulated. Um, I think it's anything that's on the ground, you know, those, those larger mm -hmm. ground mounted, they usually go, um, the one on White's path and um, my property, yeah. well, it's not and my then, property and then the can where our offices are located. Uh -huh. If you remember, I did mention this briefly last year about the solar canopies and it was really after that, uh, the White's path project, uh, was identified and whether, you know, we want to see if we can put some restrictions on the locations of them. Obviously in back parking lots, it doesn't matter. If you don't see it, it doesn't matter. But when you start looking at Route 28 and all the parking in the front, what would that look like if everyone started putting solar canopies mm -hmm. over it? It's a little concerning. Yeah. Uh, anything, anything else from the Zoning Board of Appeals, Kathy? I think that was the... Um, I think that's it. Yeah. Um, committee updates? Any committee meetings since our last? Get together? Uh, yeah, two things. Uh, Community Housing uh, Authority, I think, is having a meeting here with the planning board that you're chairing on September 21st as part of a public hearing. It's news to me. Okay, what? Mary said she was going to bring it to you. Uh, we're going to have a meeting uh, in August and then official public hearing. She wanted September 21st, 2022, um, to bring it forward and then go obviously to town meeting vote in October. Okay, I would fall meet. Okay. Yes. What is the issue again, Brad? Um, don't do this to me. Uh, it's for the questionnaire we've been doing for the uh, affordable housing. There's about a 16 or 17 question questionnaires been circulating. Um, we're going to have it tabulated and bring those results forward. And then, of course, uh, because you're the commander, if you will, of the affordable housing, community housing authority, affordable housing, community housing, community housing, then you're going to be the chair of the meeting. What? You or me? Joe. Me. Yeah, the chair of the planning board gets the chair. The you said chair of the community housing. I mean, but she's chair of the planning board, but oh. overseeing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yes. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. We need oh. to vote. We need to have a public hearing on the updated housing production plan, which would be um, by the planning board. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. All right. And then I, I uh, had a negative COVID test because Mary called me and said one of the members oh. of one of my committees tested positive. So I had that fun. Um, but out of one of my meetings, um, the trust is looking at investing with Housing Assistant Corp at the uh, property almost across the street from Town Hall to see if we can make a win-win. So we're looking about throwing a 500,000 RFP out there to see if we can have some of those affordable units be created. Across from Town Hall? Yeah. Uh, it was the old, well, almost, I don't want to see the old board steam project. Kinlan Grover, yeah. which is now the, dent the dentist. Yeah. Um, oh, that's yeah. actually a village center overlay district project that hasn't been completed. Is that why that, that sign always said nine condo units yeah, or something? Yeah, it's already that's been approved. That's why that was... Yeah, it's been approved by us. I was wondering what that was. So it may be, I think, three or four um, dwelling units. Um, it's not the nine, but we're looking if we can get three out of $500,000 and hack and do the rest. Win-win. You know, so yeah. that's what we did. Oh, great. Oh. Sorry to stumble through that. Uh, Susan, any committee updates? No, but no. Uh, can I just pick up one thing, Kathy? Yeah, sure. The, the uh, BZA uh, hearing that they had on the solar thing. I will volunteer to walk, to go back and look at that and make some notes for the for the board so we can figure out exactly what they talked about. You, uh, you would understand it best, I think. I uh, probably not, but I'll certainly can take some As a notes. former member. I need to watch two two meetings because I believe that was a continuation. Okay. So you'd have to watch the first one. Okay, but I'll go back yeah, and, that would be great. Um, and 
review it, take some notes, and try to summarize exactly what they talked about, what the, issue what the issues were, and why they tabled it, basically, um, so that we have a framework to, so we don't, right. again, reinvent the wheel. Thank you. Uh, I, I, I have no other updates. Jim, we don't have anything else other than the the, uh, the presentation in front of the Board of Selectmen, which went very well on the on the drive-in site. No other. That was, you pretty much summed it up. It went really well. Yeah. Um, we're making progress. Imperfect progress is better than no progress at all. And we are certainly making progress. And as Kathy alluded to, there's a lot to still do to get through the permitting process. and. Mm -hmm but we're marching in the right direction and it was very well received by everybody. Congratulations. Have they finalized plans for any activity uh, for this summer? I think there's, there's, they just had that same night, they had the pirate festival, which right. is this, that's good to know. This coming weekend and the following weekend will be held. That was the one that were, had been held at the Bass River Sports World right. last year. They're moving it to the drive-in site. Um, they'd like to, you know, make this kind of like a, a pirate Base. smile, mm -hmm. which I thought was kind of cute. Um, kind of like Captain Smile on Route 6 uh, And then there's a carnival, I believe, the same <coughs> people who were there last year are coming, I believe, in August as well. Right, that family, uh, that family company that ran the carnival, they did a good job. Rock, yeah. Rockwell Amusements. Yeah, they did a good job. Oh, they, okay. and, and if I can add to, to Kathy's comment, um, the, the director or whatever he is, or the, the owner of the Pirate Fest. Chris, um, Chris Schultz. Chris Schultz. <laughs> He's um, nice. He stuck around after his presentation for another hour to wait to hear what we had to say and um, understands the importance of being good neighbors. So um, we're crossing our fingers that um, everything that, that he's going to do is going to help promote the whole idea of the concept right. that we've all been working on. For So I, I'm, I'm kind of excited to see what actually transpires and it's not a rock concert. So I think um, the West Bank should be happy. Uh, I, I had attended one uh, CDC uh, meeting uh, last week. Uh, or was it this week, Kathy? <laughs> it was last week. <laughs> uh, Kathy ran through uh, for us the uh, road application on uh, the redevelopment of J the J Mart on 28, because CDC has to um, endorse the economic benefits of the plan. We did have a couple of conditions where we wanted additional information. One um, on the number of employees and employee benefits that might be offered uh, to the uh, full-time employees. And uh, one, the impact on real estate taxes. Uh, so, the um, Paul Tardif, their attorney, is going to get back to us. He gave us the presentation on it. Um, and we've all seen uh, in our packages um, that we'll be looking at that uh, at our next meeting. Is that going to be on the 15th? Yes, we're doing yes. So we'll the have 15th. Two big is going to be hearings. Yep. And unfortunately, because of timing, we have to have, have them there. Is there any way? Um, I was thinking about that. Can they, that, that deadline be extended anyway for either one of them? Is there an extension? Is there an appeal? to extend a deadline? For, for the definitive subdivision, we talked about it with them about possibly extending it. They, we would need to extend that. They would they would need to agree to extend that to have anything beyond June 15th. But is June, it the board that asks for the extension or do they come to us and ask for an extension? Both sides. It can be a, dis right, both sides. And it can be a discussion. Okay. You know, I think if it's a case where we really want additional information or we're more inclined to deny it, they might be, oh no, let us, we'll give you some more time so that we can give you the information to help you get to to, to an approval. Um, they usually um, would do that. Yeah, the 6A project seems a little bit further along in development. Um, so I think they'd probably be, be more interested in getting, keeping going. The, the uh, gas station, I have pages and pages of questions, if that makes any difference. <laughs> Well, we're, pages and pages. <laughs> I do. The, I just pages pages. in general, the, the, the road projects, you're looking at the pretty. Okay, you're, look, so you're looking at the pretty. You're looking at does it meet substantially adhere to the architectural site design standards? That's what you're looking at. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily things that you might be looking at if you were sitting on the Zoning Board of Appeals. We're not issuing any special permit. 
We are just making a decision as to whether it substantially adheres to the architectural site design right. standards, period. So things like what adequate it looks parking like. and yeah. side yard setbacks, right. not, right. our, not our purview. No. Well, actually it is. It, it, it's that screening, is, is there adequate screening? If you feel that there is adequate screening, we can, um, I'll be preparing a, a staff report for that similar to, that's why I gave you guys the all the section 411, which is the road mm. bylaw and the architectural site design standards so that you guys uh, can take a look at that before you get deluged with a bunch of information for the for the two hearings on, on that. Can you remind me again, the ZBA hears this when? Or? They're not on the ZBA yet. Okay. Yeah, they have to come here and you guys need to approve it first. If you deny it, they can't go okay, to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, the, the road bylaw allows them to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals and ask for special permit relief right. uh, versus something that might need to be a variance. So obviously that's easier and that's why they're going this route. They could always just go to the Zoning Board of Appeals and ask for, I think they need one variance and then the rest would be special permit anyway. Right. I think there'd be five special permits and one variance, at least according to the list of four and one. They're asking for, for a certain amount of relief right. and the, it would be one special permit yeah. and then one, I think there's one variance. So, and they always retain that right, don't they, Kathy? If they were to come before us and we decided it did not substantially meet the guidelines, they still have the ability to go to BZA. Yeah. Yeah. We, we don't, we don't, we don't kill the project. The road is an optional overlay right. district they may apply for. Uh, and the, the one other um, item on our agenda for that CEDC meeting uh, was that we're uh, rewriting the charge of the committee based on the actions of the annual town meeting um, and the tourism um, uh, preservation fund. Uh, and in addition, uh, we've had an interpretation from town council that in fact the committee um, uh, should not be awarding tourism grants, that we should be recommending tourism grants uh, to uh, the uh, town administrator for approval. To the so town administrator. To the town administrator, not to the board of selectmen. And does the administrator then make the award or does it still have to go to the board? I uh, don't know how they're gonna handle that process. Yeah. That's the back end of it. For us, um, we will make recommendations and determinations with respect to the tourism reservation, tourism revenue preservation fund in the allocation of funds for marketing, physical improvements, and other initiatives. Mm -hmm. This has been a Board of Selectmen issue as to whether or not a, a volunteer committee can commit, funds. can commit funds and make decisions as to the allocation of these Especially appropriated funds. money. None of it's donated, it's all appropriated money. Yeah, I mean, we have to get an appropriation at town meeting. Right. So that process, we were established as part of the um, Massachusetts general laws as the committee that does this and we've been doing this for a while um, but there was some question from some members of the board of selectmen as to how we had the authority as a volunteer committee right. to award contracts and right. so interpretation from town council was that we were being inconsistent with the act and now we will be consistent with the act as amended uh, to make recommendations. We hope it doesn't stall the process. Um, so, and in addition, the, 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 the committee is gonna work on uh, Kyle, again, the one hand, one, one arm paper hanger. Uh, for us, uh, we'll be looking at uh, maybe once this door, Pandora's, this box is open now, Maybe we should look at everything that's in the charge and relook at what economic development means and its connection to wastewater. Um, so we, a, a, that story will be continuing. Madam Chairman, as the person who is directly responsible for your charge with the CEDC, it's enlightening to see that you're re re reviewing our work of 20 plus years ago <laughs> and that um, some change is in the works. It's, it's time. It's a good time, I think, to take a look at it. And uh, again, our the administration has asked us, um, and we're looking to see what kinds of new definitions of economic development 
should be shaped as a result of wastewater and, and, and the pipe up 28. What is it? What is what should what should this what committee should be? Yeah. What should this committee be doing? And, and it's a changed world since COVID. So when we start looking at how economic development is today versus, you know, 10, even three years ago, four years ago, things are different. So yeah. I'm encouraged that you're taking oh, another look at your well, charge. Thank you, Jim. Yeah. Although there's something going on. No, you were the partly the right to one. I'm sorry, where the 20 years? Uh, the old Johnny E's and the, the two motels on 28 that are that have the plastic over the signs, the old Howard Johnson's and the one next to it. There are lots of activity there today. There were dump trucks and lumber trucks and all sorts of things going on there. I the one's next to, you, to the um, old Irish village, now the Cape. No, no, further further down. going down. Yeah, Mayflower. The, go, going down opposite the cove. Oh, you know, those, oh. The, you get the, you get used to be the Thunderbird. And, right, yeah. Oh, yeah. See, I know now the old names. Johnny. The journey, old Johnny's <laughs> and the designer warehouse. <laughs> I think Johnny E's got sold, and I'm, but I know mm -hmm. I haven't seen well, anything. So I would see investment. I would see commercial developments out the six of the design review committee, and I'd see nothing. Uh, any other board member items for us? Uh, correspondence or staff updates? Kathy, you've sent us. I think everything. Yeah, the, the, the only update is I did meet with the conservation commission, and they did authorize the creation of the open space and rec update ad hoc committee. And um, we are proceeding uh, with forming that committee. I'm hoping that um, Will is still, okay, Will's still on board to um, be the planning board representative to the open space and rec plan. Uh, I'm gonna be meeting with the recreation commission um, on Wednesday to see if they will uh, author, authorize someone. And then also um, we're looking at maybe someone from disability uh, as well as open space. And then obviously CONCOM. And Kathy, then we'll go does, back to the Conservation Commission with the recommendation. When um, does the selectman, when does Dorcas get She started one? already. She started yep. already. Okay. Uh, meetings coming up. Uh, June 15th, we have two public hearings, continuation of one, and then the road uh, hearing. Uh, so as I anticipate that will be a lengthy, a lengthy meeting. Uh, and then another one scheduled for July 6th. I don't have anything on the agenda for that yet. Something okay. gets continued. <laughs> um, yeah, right. Okay. Um, and with that, uh, may I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, all in favor, let me do roll call again. Um, Brad Goodwin? Aye. Susan Britta? Aye. Joanne Crowley? Aye. Jim Sabin? Aye. Liz Hotsgrove? Aye. Will Rubenstein? Aye. All right, thank you. Thanks for thanks for everybody coming. Thanks for coming remotely. Nice to see you, Liz. Love your hair, Liz. Oh yeah. <laughs> this looks uh Will looks like he's at some rock concert or something. He's the con at a campfire for goodness sakes. But thank you.